Games Workshop promised that contrast paints will do the base coat and shading in all one thick coat. But does it actually save you any time at all? Guys, this is MC the Miniature Surgeon here, and today in part 3 of my contrast paint series, I'm going to not just tell you, but show you head to head how using contrast paints will hold up against good old fashioned base coat and shading. Let's go. So for this example, I have two Primaris Intercessors, both undercoated with Grey Seer Primer. Now if you know me, then you would know I'm a huge fan of the Blood Angels, and it's with that vibrant red power armor that I'm going to do this experiment for you, for your viewing pleasure. Now I'm going to start with the contrast paint method, then move to the classical method, and we're going to compare the speed and the quality of the end product, so stay to the end to find out. For the contrast paint experiment, I'm going to use Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint to create the base coat. The reason I chose not to use Wraithbone Undercoat, as some of you may say I should, is because Blood Angels Red is already a very vibrant color, and Wraithbone actually adds that vibrancy, and having that red will be too bright. And after all, we don't want our Space Marines to move in the battlefield looking like a candied apple now, do we? There's several things to bear in mind. Contrast paints are quite fluid and tend to take a little bit longer to dry than usual paints, especially if applied in thick coats. Another issue is that contrast paints tend to pool in certain areas. Now, sure, it's super useful when we're shading and recessing those deep panels, but when it globs up to create a dark dot on a flat piece of armor, it just looks out of place. To prevent this, here are several tips. Tip number one, don't overload your brush. Now, I know this tip seems pretty simple and intuitive, but bear in mind, even though contrast paints can give you pretty good coverage like a base paint, it's a lot more fluid than your usual mixture. So even if your brush doesn't look overloaded, it may very well be, so do check it on your palette first. For added security, go ahead and paint the recesses first when you start in a particular area. So even if you did overload your brush a little bit, it's going to where it needs to go. Tip number two goes hand in hand with tip number one, and that is to focus on a single part of your miniature at one single time. Now, you can only keep your eyes on so many parts of the model at once, so why don't you just deal with one at a time? Once you're done with it, no matter how bad the coat may be, just leave it alone, because tip number three, go with two thin coats. As the god of two thin coats, Duncan Rhodes, have always advocated, giving two thin coats can really help smoothen out any patches that the previous layer has left behind. Moreover, thin coats of contrast paints actually dry much faster than a similarly thin classical paint, so you can usually move right back to the first part of the mini once the last one is dry. If that doesn't help, a hair dryer definitely will. Guys, big shout out to Duncan Rhodes, who is really the man who got me back into Warhammer since my decade-long hiatus. If you're watching this, I just want to let you know I love how clear your videos and how passionate you really are, and I'm grateful for everything you've taught me. Guys, go ahead and do check out his new channel, link in the description. Now, throughout this entire process, the contrast paint will be dropping to those recess details that we need shaded, and since the color is much darker when it's condensed into those recesses, there's really no need to go over it again with another color. So there we have it, our contrast paint Blood Angel completed in 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Moving on to how I used to speed paint things, here's the other Primaris Intercessor I primed with Grey Seer. I'm going to quickly base coat the entire model with Mephiston Red that's slightly thinned down. And for this process, I suggest using a synthetic brush with a large belly to serve two main functions. First, the tougher bristles on a synthetic brush help you go over a larger area without snagging onto details or worry about your Kalinsky sable brush that costed you a fortune. Second thing though is to retain plenty of paint inside your brush so you don't have to go repeatedly back to your palette while base coating the model. A hair dryer would really help since the thin down Mephiston red mixture is going to take some time to dry on its own. So similar to the last step, once that coat is dry, we're going to give the model a second thin coat of Mephiston red. Once the second coat is dry, we're going to create a mixture of Corvus Black Mix 1-3 to with water to line the recessed details. This will give us a mixture that's slightly more pigmented than Nelm Oil, but also thin enough for us to just drop into those recesses. Now go ahead and go through the entire mini and line in any dark areas. Now this step really helps the whole model pop, especially in Space Marines given the amount of recessed details there are, to give it more definition even before the highlighting step.
And there we have it, our classic model done with base coat and shading in 15 minutes and 33 seconds. Well guys, here's a side-to-side -side comparison of the two models, and I'm going to show you the highlighted version in just a moment, so stay tuned. Here are three major things I realized testing these two techniques head-on. Contrast paint was only slightly faster than the classical base coating and panel lining method, roughly by about 20%. Before I started this experiment, I thought that the contrast paint method would be quicker, but since you have to paint it panel by panel to make sure the paint doesn't pool in areas that it shouldn't, this slowed the entire process down quite a bit. That said, the process of panel lining for the classical method can be highly variable when you put it in the hands of a veteran or a new painter. Now this brings us nicely onto the second point, which is skill level. Now the skill level and focus required for panel lining is much higher since you need to be able to be experienced enough to identify the locations that require these panel lining and make sure you have good understanding of paint property to make sure you have a good thin down paint to put into those recesses. Now of course, for the contrast paint method, this particular area of skill is not required. Lastly, but probably most importantly, the finish is really quite different. The traditional base coating method understandably gives you a very smooth and uniform finish that would be great, especially if you aim to painting near the heavy metal style. Now for the contrast paint method, it tends to be more gradient on your armor, since the fluid nature of the paint leads to it being more intense towards the bottom and in a way simulating how light would strike the model. Now bear in mind this can only be done properly if you're painting panel by panel because otherwise you'll have those paints pulling in different areas. So guys, which do you think is better? Good old fashioned base coat and panel lining? Or using contrast paints? Do let me know in the comments section below what you think after watching this experiment. Hope you enjoyed this head to head comparison of two popular methods to base coat your model. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the like button, hit subscribe, and turn on the bell icon to stay up to date with more awesome content. Guys, this is MC the Miniature Surgeon, signing out.